man, dia masih lagi tak faham sains. Although he studied medicine in Singapore. In fact, he was classmates with my late father. Anyway, that's long story lah. Um, the thing is, there's no such uh, scientific, rational or empirical evidence for race. You know, race is not a scientific thing. Race is a socio-political construct, meaning it's arbitrary. If you look at your genes and the genes of someone from another... Now, ethnicity and race are different things. There are things in anthropology, in sociology, in social anthropology, if you study these subjects, um, as ethnicity, but there's no such thing as race. There's only one race, the human race, okay? The rest are all ethnicities. Now, if you look at the genes of people from different ethnicities, it's very hard for you um, to identify which ethnicity comes from. There are probabilities, but no absolute terms, you know. Okay, anyway, coming back to this old man, he seems to think that this land... You know, he's thinking in terms of uh, Tanah Melayu, Persekutuan Tanah Melayu. That one was abolished in 1963. It's now Malaysia, okay? Dia masih lagi tak faham. I think he's living in the past lah. That's why dia dah nyanyok sikit, you know, having some cognitive impairment. A mild cognitive impairment. Um, anyway, the point I want to make is this man get up aham. There's no such thing as race. This Malaysia is for Malaysians, just like the planet is for the whole uh, people on the planet. Now, when you look at the even the concept of a nation state, it's arbitrary. In fact, the law also is arbitrary. You know, they say your boundary is here because somebody drew a line in the sand. Uh, if you look at the border of Cambodia, it has always, for hundreds of years, been changing. Bila dia gaduh dengan Vietnam, dia menang, the border goes to the east. Bila dia kalah, the border goes to the west. Bila dia gaduh dengan Siam, the Khmer, if they win, the border will go further to the east, increase their land. Kalau dia kalah, it goes to the west. So, take the example of Cambodia. Dia punya border is very fluid, very dynamic. 100 years ago, there's no such thing as Malaysia. There might be something called sultanates, various sultanates, but no Persekutuan Tanah Melayu either. If you want to go back to history, go back to 1905, uh, the Sultanate of Patani Darussalam. Now, many people don't know about this sultanate. This sultanate is a country between what was then Siam, Negeri Siam, and... Uh, the various states that make up uh, what is now Malaysia. Okay, in fact, the states of Kelantan, Terengganu, Kedah, and Perlis were part of Patani Darussalam, as were the now provinces of Yala, uh, Bentong, Naratiwat, and uh, Songkla. This was one country. In 1905, the British and the king of Siam, don't know his name, La Rama or whatever, they made an agreement. And between the two of them, they divided Patani Darussalam into two. So, Perlis, Kedah, Terengganu and Kelantan became part of British Malaya. And then Songklan Naritawat became part of Thailand. Ever since then, the disgruntled Muslim Thais or former Patani Darussalam citizens are upset with the Thais and then uh, okay lah I don't want to comment about the Kelantanese suffice to say that they were sold down the river more than 100 years ago and until now they were balas berdendam at the rest of the orang semenanjung uh, but that's open to contention so let's not get into that so now, I, Aslan Bet Adnan, my IC defines me as Orang Melayu. And that 
is a result of an accident of birth. I could have been born to Chinese parents and then the IC will say Bangsa China or whatever. Or could be some, you know, born to some Tamil family and my name could have been Ratnam or something. This is an accident of birth. You had no choice about it. And if Ridan T can change his ethnicity from Chinese to Melayu, uh, why can't I change my ethnicity from Melayu to something else? I mean, I don't, I'm not particularly fond of the word Melayu, which is an artificial word, you know. It was actually invented by Stanford Raffles in 18-something. So the word Melayu itself, in fact, when he first wrote it, it was in Jawi, so it was pronounced Malayo. Uh, Mim, Lam, Alef, Ya, Wow. So, you know, it was pronounced as Malayo. Because, you know, the, the Jawi and the Arabic, they don't have vowels, they have consonants so like wow is w but it's also u when it's used as a vowel anyway coming back to the word layu i'm not particularly fond of it because it has the word layu in there you know i mean what kind of uh uh name you give a people you know and this ties with the myth of the lazy native and all that lah. just like the word malaysia you know because it comes from the word Malay and then Malayu. Um, in Latin, mal means something wrong, lah, deformed, sakit, you know, like malotrusion, malfunction, uh, you know, like dysfunctional, like that. Lah. So, some people say mal Asia, everything that is wrong with Asia, you know. Of course, the tourist people will say Malaysia, truly Asia, whatever. So when you look at the big picture, just step back, get out of Malaysia, go outside, go, you know, pretend you're on, on the moon looking down at the planet. Can you see the boundary or not? There's no boundaries. We are one people. We are one human race. And this planet is our home. It's our only home. If you want to dream, you nak pergi another planet, macam Elon Musk atau Vision Lakiani, itu semua pipe dream lah. It won't happen in their lifetime or their grandfather's life, uh, grandchildren's lifetime or great grandchildren's lifetime. Okay, we have biotic associations with so many thousand species. Without those species, we cannot survive. Let me give you an example. In your gut, there's a thing called the gut microbiome, also known as the gut biota. These are viruses, yeast, molds, bacteria, a whole bunch of living things, you know. About 35,000 species. Now, for you to survive as a human, you need these 35,000 species. If you bring this uh, yourself to another planet, you don't have these 35,000 of, of gut bacteria, you will die. Same like our food. Right now, most of humanity survives on about 35 different species of food. Rice, wheat, you know, all those potatoes, all the main things. But... Imagine if you go to another planet, if you even take just the 35 pounds, you might not go. Okay? So forget about going to another planet. Now, the other thing about this planet, it's a finite planet. It has limited size, finite resources. And as David Attenborough says, if you think that infinite growth, that means infinite growth, is possible, in a planet with finite resources, you're either mad, like Mahde, or an economist. The economists, they want gila sikit because they always have assumptions. You know, they assume this, assume perfect knowledge, assume, uh, what do you call it, uh, market forces, blah, blah, blah. All these assumptions, it doesn't happen in the real world. Okay? They make these assumptions because if you want to take into account the reality of the world, you will never get uh, your formula correct. You know, the, your theory won't work. There are so many exceptions and, and you know, uh, exemptions to the rule and whatever. So just to simplify things, they make certain assumptions. But please bear in mind, those are just assumptions. They do not reflect reality. So just like the reality now, we live in a planet with finite resources. Now, what is growing at an exponential rate is the population. When I was born, 
this was in the late 50s lah, okay? There were over 2 mil billion people on this planet, less than 3 billion. When I was in primary school, it became 3 billion. And then when I was in secondary school, 4 billion. I remember those times. And then, last November, 8 billion. So in my lifetime alone, the world population has almost tripled, you know. You bandingkan, eh? In 1850, the world population was only 1 billion. So in about 150 years, we have increased the world population by 8 billion. Now why am I talking about overpopulation? The problem is, all the problems in the world that we face today, whether it's pollution, Habitat destruction, uh, what do you call it, species extinction. These are all facets of one problem. And that problem is overpopulation. We reproduce too much. Each person you bring into the world has carbon footprint, has a need for food, for housing, for clothes, for land. You know, when you look at the forest reserves being encroached, and you see the reasons why they encroach to make houses, they encroach for agriculture, because it's human needs. People need food, people need to live somewhere. And they don't want to encroach to make uh, ECRL, because people need to go from one place to another, so they need transport. So now what, I mean, let me give you an example. What China did about 50 years ago or, or more, they had this one-child policy. So in China, for three generations, can you imagine, for three generations, a family can only have one child. Of course, it had problems like little emperor issue and things like that. But what happens now after they reach their target, you know? They're the world's biggest economy. The Chinese economy is 20 times larger than the previous biggest economy, which is the US. Okay, it's 120 times the U.S. economy. Now, U.S. pun ada problem. They don't know how to compete. So, they play dirty. You know, they have barriers to trade, barriers to entry, non-tariff barriers. They want to ban TikTok. They want, you know, all sorts of things. You know, the steel industry in the U.S. was the biggest in the world. And now it's nowhere, totally collapsed. India and China and uh, Australia have bigger steel industries than US. And why it collapsed? Because the American politicians had protectionism. You know, when they don't compete but protect, ah, that's what happens. You get weak, you get dysfunctional, and you go bankrupt. And that is similar to what the Malay political elite have been doing to Malays, protecting the Malays. Instead of enabling them to compete, protect them. But they do more than that. They do this thing called ethnotology, which is the practice of keeping people ignorant. Purposely do that so that you have power over them. It's a power structure thing. This, if you look at history, power structure is a big thing like throughout history. Uh, men do it over women, the rich do it over the poor, the learned over the ignorant, you know. Uh, the, the, the church or the clergy over the, the masses. This is a repetitive theme in history. If you don't learn from history, you will be doomed to keep repeating the mistake, the same mistake until doomsday. So read up your history. Anyway, I ramble. I'm rambling because I got so many things to say and I'm just talking to clarify my thoughts. Um, so, what do you want to do? Do you want to have one child law in Malaysia or do you want to voluntarily not have children? You see, by not having, uh, incre by slowing down their population growth, China has managed to manage the economy and... Um, become the world's biggest economy. Now, a lot of people have misconception about communism. 
Communism are about people who live in communes. Now you look at China, mana ada orang lagi duduk dalam commune? They look, they live in uh, like HDB flats or condos or houses like other people live, you know. They have embraced capitalism and I think they are more capitalist than many other people as well. Okay, if you want to think about people who live in communes, these are the Israelis. The Israelis have kibbutz. Kibbutz is a commune. So the Israelis, by definition, are more communist than the Chinese. And then the Israelis is the anak tiri or, you know, favorite, a blue-eyed son of the US lah. Tak boleh buat salah punya. They can break all the UN sanctions, but at the Security Council, US will be told. So this UN also is a very kepala khota kind of organization, lah, very unfair. I know I'm rambling, I'm venting, I'm giving out a lot of things, but I'm also planting some seeds in your mind that, you know, we need to embrace change, we need to create change, we must be the world, we, we must be the change we want to see in the world. Mahatma Gandhi. Okay, when I was a boy, yeah, in primary school, secondary school, I was a boy scout. A scouting and girl guide movement was founded by Lord Baden Powell, and Baden Powell had this motto: "Bukan scout no motto lah, scout no motto be prepared." But you have to be prepared for the future as well. But his personal motto is: "Leave the world a better place than you found it." If you can do that, you have contributed something. If you <laughs> made the world a worse place than when you found it, like what Mahade is trying to do, then you don't deserve any respect from me. Lah. You would not have earned any respect from me. In, on the contrary, you, had, you would have earned my contempt and derision. And people like Najib, you know, his father brought him up badly. Lah. That's why he became like that. So, you know, in the Malay language, there's a proverb lah, kurang hajar. It is normally interpreted to be rude or biadab. But actually, it is a comment on the parents. The poor, you know, it means, kurang hajar means not taught enough. It means the parent didn't teach them manners, didn't teach them uh, civility, didn't teach them core human values, universal human values. Ayo, don't get me started on 1948 Declaration of Human Rights. I think I better stop here. Otherwise, sampai malam pun tak habis. So, this is some food for thought from me, Aslan bin Adnan. And uh, you'll be hearing more from me lah now that I know that uh, you can make voice notes uh, without keeping your finger on the button. Uh, I'll be making more voice notes. Okay, see you next time. Bye! Peace,